Λοιπόν, θα ήθελα να σας πω καταρχάς ότι θα μαγνητοσκοπήσουμε την, ε, την παρουσίαση αυτή για να την έχουμε εις τα αρχεία μας, όταν ελπίζω να είναι εντάξει με, άλλ, με όλους σας. Ε, και πρωτού δώσω το λόγο στην καθηγήτρια Χαφτιγγέλ, που την έχουμε μαζί μας, ε, θα πω λίγα λόγια ε, για την ίδια στην, στην αγγλική γλώσσα. Καταρχάς, καλό βράδυ, καλησπέρα σε όλους. Ο, το πρόγραμμα Educational Leadership and Policy του Ανοιχτού Πανεπιστημίου Κύπρου και ο Κυπριακός Όμιλος Εκπαιδευτικής Διοίκησης σας προσκαλούμε με μεγάλη χαρά, σας καλωσορίζω, συγγνώμη, με μεγάλη χαρά στην εκπλήρωση που συνδιοργανώνουν απόψε. Ε, τόσο με φυσική παρουσία, έχουμε ήδη αρκετά άτομα εδώ στην αίθουσα, όσον και εξ αποστάσεως. Το θέμα της απόψινής διάλεξης είναι «How a growth, a growth mindset enhances leadership quality». Η ομιλήτρια μας απόψε είναι από την Αυστρία, είναι μια εξαιρετική καθηγήτρια και ε, πολύ καλή φίλη. Uh, Barbara Hamstingel has completed her studies of psychology at the universities of Vienna and Klagenfurt and works as an associate professor for personality, um, uh, psychology and educational psychology at the University of Klagenfurt in Austria. Her research focuses on self-regulation, motivation, and action control, and their relation to resilience. Her special interest is director on epistemological problems of psychology and social sciences. Her current projects address resilience and development of resilience, cross-cultural school development, and teacher professionalization in India and Austria, lesson study and learning study research and the psychology of science. And I might say on a more personal note that uh, as far as I know, Barbara is an expert on skiing in the Austrian Alps. I think I know that uh, from personal experience. Uh, so it's very nice to have uh, Barbara with us tonight and I'm very pleased to welcome her. Uh, so, please join me in welcoming Barbara Hafstingel for tonight. So, welcome to Cyprus. It's a pleasure to have you and an honor. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll switch seats. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. It is for this nice introduction and uh, the nice invitation to Cyprus. Um, uh, Kalispera. That's the only word I can. I can <laughs> That's very good. I can restore as well. I can restore as well. Even better. <laughs> and um, thank you very much again for this nice invitation. I like to be here. And it's my first time in Cyprus, and um, I've learned a lot about this country and this city until now. And today I will share uh, some um, research from my side with you, and I'm very happy about that. And I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you find it as interesting as I find it. So um, let me go on with the slides. Uh, these are the points I'm going to talk today. It's about uh, what is mindset, what is a growth mindset. It's a short definition that we know what we are talking about. And then I will talk about uh, the consequences of mindsets, what have, uh, what do they influence in our life. Uh, after this, I will go to the point three, what do we really know about growth mindset? 
and how can we foster growth mindset? After this, uh, I will talk a little bit about our project. It was also a Erasmus Plus project, which was called Growth Minds, uh, where we uh, developed some materials for teachers and university teachers. And last but not least, I want to discuss with you very shortly uh, studies on growth mindset and leadership, because I think this is something which is very interesting for you. So let's start with a mindset quiz, which comes from uh, Tweck, Carol Tweck, who developed also this concept of growth mindset. And uh, if you have a look on these uh, questions, maybe you can somehow feel what is meant with a mindset. For example, your intelligence is something very basic about you uh, that you can change very much, no matter how much intelligence you have you can always change it quite a bit um, only a few people will be truly good at sports you have to be born with this ability or not born with this ability and so on and so further and you can make i, I can share your slide the slides also with you if you like uh, after the session and uh, let's let's have a look how the points are here if you have many points, you have a, a strong growth mindset. So if you think that you can change your intelligence, if you think that you uh, can it develop a little bit, you can change your abilities and so on, then you have a growth mindset. So what is a growth mindset? Um, it is more or less a collection or a conglomerate of beliefs about the world, the social environment and in this talk, I will talk about the mindset about myself, about ourselves, about uh, human in general. And uh, to put it uh, shortly, to put it more, more explicit, mindsets are implicit theories of about, for example, intelligence, which is very important for us in school, for effort, which is very important for us in school, for failure, also for self-regulated learning or volition. And this is investigated in different um, studies. I have um, shared with you this, um, also the references. You can have a look after the session on the re reference list. There's also measurement overview of implicit um, theories, unfortunately only in German, but um, so psychologists are keen to measure those mindsets and implicit theories of people because they have an impact on our um, effort, achievements. So a growth mindset is uh, the belief that personal characteristics are changeable and can be developed. Uh, Carol Dweck called them uh, incremental theorists and which means that people think that they can change their characteristics and they're not fixed. In the opposite, we have the fixed mindset. Uh, entity theorists believe that uh, personal characteristics are fixed and unchangeable throughout the life. Um, Giga and Tweck, who have um, written a very important paper in the American Psychologist about uh, the topic, write that in summary, mindset theory is a theory about responses to challenges or setbacks. It is not a theory about academic achievement in general. The theory predicts that mindset should be associated with achievement, particularly among people who are facing challenges. So this definition goes a little bit in line with the definition of resilience and uh, it's a, a kind of um, something what uh, people strengthens in different levels. We will see it a little bit later. There is also a very interesting book um, written by Carol Zweig where she writes about uh, the importance of having a growth mindset, what we want to have, that all have it uh, in parenting, in business, in school, in relationships. So this is not a topic just only for the school or for the education system. It's something which is very important uh, for society, to be honest, uh, also in my view. So um, let's talk about a little bit about the consequences of mindsets. Um, I summarized it in a, 
in a table where you can see fixed mindset versus growth mindset and there are different, different goals, for example. Fixed mindset people tend to, that they want to look smart in schools. In contrast to growth mindset people, they like to learn. They have the goal in school to learn something. Um, how do fixed mindset people um, value effort? They don't value it really, and we will see later how it uh, how it is in um, in a concrete situation. Growth mindset people tend to value effort as well. Um, how is the reaction to failure? Fixed mindset people tend to give up earlier, and growth mindset people tend to to work harder when they fail. So this is something which is evidence-based. Um, let's have a look how they think. Um, uh, these are citations from Blackwell and, colleague, and colleagues. The main thing I want when I do um, my schoolwork is to show how good I am at it. And people with a growth mindset think it's much more important for me to learn things in my classes than it is to get the best grades. Uh, well, your effort, we have also some thoughts about this. Effort is negative for fixed mindset people. To tell the truth, when I work hard at my schoolwork, it makes me feel like I'm not very smart. So they think also that they must uh, do everything without having much effort. And uh, growth mindset people, in contrast, uh, they want to have more effort when they fail. The harder you work at something, the better you will be at it. So it's a completely different thinking of this. Um, people with a fixed mindset, when they have a failure, uh, they tend to react on um, this helplessly. I would spend less time on this subject from now on. I would try not to take this subject ever again, or I would try to cheat on the next test to have better grades, for example. And uh, people with a growth mindset react on this re in a kind of resilient uh, manner. I would work harder in this class from now on. I would spend more time studying for the tests. So these are things uh, and thoughts which are very um, concrete and not theoretically um, um, bounded, but uh, we will see later which theory is um, important for these thoughts. So what we know is that also the chief mind is lower for fixed mindset people and higher for growth mindset people, even if they have the same intelligence, the same tested intelligence. That's very interesting. It's only about the mindset that they say, okay, when I have effort, when I want to have this goal, I will, I will, uh, I will go for this, and I will do it with much and more effort. Uh, and finally, I will, I will be able to do something like a learn, learning the guitar, or learning Greek, for example, or something like that. Um, I just want to summarize this, that you know that it's uh, not only based on thoughts of students, uh, what we know uh, on the base of different uh, studies is that students with a growth mindset endorse learning and mastery goals are more inclined to learn and master an ability. Um, they have more mastery goal orientation. They are more likely to attribute failure uh, the controllable factors. So they know that when they fail, they can try to control this problem and to learn and to do it more, more with more effort, and then they will uh, succeed some, sometime. They also, they also persist in the face of setbacks. They can better cope with challenging or difficult situations because they know they can change it somehow, mostly. Not always we know that there are many, many challenges we cannot change or things uh, which are more or less fate, but uh, we can change many, many things in our lives. They cope better with transitions, transition from one school to another school, for example. They're more motivated, they develop better self-regulation, and they also learn from mistakes. And as I said, there's no connection between the mindset 
and tested intelligence. So these are a lot, huge number of different studies who in, which investigated uh, the importance of a growth mindset. Um, we will later go to um, these controversies I've already mentioned. But let us summarize also a little bit in a, on a theoretical manner. Uh, we have in our project, we have um, distilled indicators of a growth mindset. One indicator is, for example, the primary focus on developing students' skills and competences instead of letting them demonstrate their skills and competences. This is something which is very important and we often can see in schools, for example. Um, indicator two is uh, the information about effective learning strategies and how, on how we effectively can regulate and evaluate learning. Indicator three um, is that we also provide information, for example, for neuroplasticity, that it's really um, new knowledge that our brain can change and you can drain it also after a stroke, for example, much more than science uh, believed in earlier years. A fourth indicator is the support of the belief that success is controllable by the students and dependent by the efforts. Indicator five means that uh, we have to support students' need for autonomy. This is something which we will see later, which theory is basing, uh, is the basement for this. They can feel free and self-determined. Indicator six means or indicates somehow that uh, the students are aware that, that they have learned something and they are competent, that they can earn competence when they uh, want to learn really something and we should help them to experience their newly acquired competence. Um, indicator seven is the support of students' needs for feeling significant to others. So this is a kind of social dependency. Uh, nobody of us uh, is highly motivated when he or she is sitting alone somewhere. It's not included in a social network. So this is um, a very important yeah. indicator as well. And uh, what also we realized in our uh, project is that students um, should learn to uh, think in processes, not in, in, in the final thing they have to reach. So what is the theoretical perspective on this growth mindset? We can see it's a little bit of uh, beliefs and mindset on metacognition, for example. It's attributional style and locus of control, which are very well investigated theories in psychology. It's achievement goal orientation. It's also, in our view, self determined motivation theory, which um, very, very much supports uh, the student's motivation. Um, Carol Dweck is responsible for many, for example, uh, for attributional style research in, in the US, but also for the formulation of the achievement goal orientation theory. And we can say that growth mindset theory is a um, further developed um, perspective on how we can foster students. So we have heard a lot about um, growth mindset, but what do we really know about, about growth mindset? Um, it's always something which is discussed in science, in psychological research, and I've uh, found um, the paper by Yeager and Tweck, two years old, and they stressed four questions, which are, I think, also very interesting for us. Do mindsets predict students' outcomes? Do student mindsets interventions work? Um, are mindset intervention effects as is too small to be interesting for us? Does it have really an effect? We can say yes, it should be uh, focused on it. And at the end, do teacher mindset interventions work? Uh, do they really work or do they don't? Do they not working? 
So this is um, a result from PISA 2015, where you can see um, the higher uh, the score is here, the better the reading cap capabilities are of the 15-year-old students, and the higher the score is here, the more students think that they uh, can um, develop their intelligence. And uh, most countries are in this regression line here, so it's a positive regression, and uh, we see that um, almost every country uh, bears or has a positive correlation between the reading score and the, the belief and the growth mindset of the students. There are some where it's a little bit different. In China, for example, I will go on it a little bit later. Um, a second, um, it's also from the PISA study. Um, second point, you can see also in the gender, girls uh, profit more from a growth mindset. The higher the growth mindset is, the better is the reading score. Also, students with the disadvantaged uh, social and economic status profit more from growth mindset. And also, students with an immigrant uh, background. Um, so this is something in which was found in several studies that students who are many disadvantaged um, background variables, like, for example, um, difficult family situations, uh, immigra immigration background or something like that, or a bad education of the, of the, family, of the parents, uh, they have a high um, advantage when they think that they have a growth mindset. Um, here again, correlation, you see almost every correlation is significant between the reading score and the growth mindset. So mindsets predict students' outcomes. Hello. Um, here, exceptional China. China is different. We will see later why it's not really uh, sure. There are some hypotheses about this. Um, and Yegan Twig also investigated the uh, conf consequences of a fixed mindset, for example. They see that a fixed mindset predicts negative effort beliefs, performance avoidance goals, and helpless responses, as we have seen earlier. And it has a negative effect on the grades and advanced math course taking. They won't take course. So this was the first question. I would say yes, mindsets predict student outcomes. And um, the second question was, uh, do student mindset interventions work? Yes, they do work. And uh, Yig and Dweck, um provided a mindset uh, per context perspective on this question. It was very interesting for me and impressive because um, the mo you can see here that Ah, oh, I have learned now. Um, you can see here the effect size on the left side. And if the intervention is uh, uh, such uh, defined that it's instilling a mindset, if no, there are null effects. If yes, the second question is arising at risk or poor outcomes. If no, there are not so much effects. But if the population is poor and at risk, and you say yes, it's additionally support, uh, important how the context of the school is, of the, of the family, of the social and society background. And here you have weaker or stronger effects. So also the second question, you can say yes. Um, interventions work with students. And um, let's go to the... Third question, are mindset intervention effect sizes too small to be interesting? Um, this is discussed in this uh, very interesting paper. In a, for me, it was interesting how they discuss it. And uh, to be honest, uh, you find when you investigate intervention studies, effect size is about 0.2, which is... Um, 
when they cite Kraft et al. Um, um, high effect for real life outcomes. It's not about um, laboratory results or uh, kind of um, experiments. But uh, if you see it in a real life situation, real life intervention and evaluation, you can see uh, regularly uh, an effect size of 0.2, which is not that bad. Um, we have the problem with the teachers. The teacher mindset interventions work. There is no evidence at the moment that it does work. Um, and the Yigen Dweck raises several very important questions for us in future researches because we have to learn uh, precisely how to address teachers' mindsets about themselves and their students. We have to understand which teachers' practices feed into and maintain students' fixed and growth mindsets. So this is a difficult point as well. And how to guide and alter the teachers' practices <clears throat> and how to do so in a way that affects students' perceptions as well and also the behaviors. So if you work with the students alone, it's working. But if you work with the teachers, they are not Interventions are not working at the moment that they can put it to the students. And what Egan Dweck mentions about OS teachers, uh, I can say the same thing for Austria. Changing teacher behavior through professional development is not very, very challenging and very, very hard for all. So how we can foster growth mindset? We tried it in our um, Erasmus Plus project. And uh, we had one hypothesis that I think we should teach teachers uh, about several professional knowledge about the dynamics of beliefs and mindsets and how they influence the students' behavior and learning efforts. And also a little bit more information about scientific theories about, for example, cognitive development, metacognition, attributional style, achievement goal orientation, and also motivational theories as well as personality and self-control and self-regulation. It looks it looks much, but it's not that much. And it's basic knowledge I think a teacher should have uh, on this on this side. Um, this is our hypothesis and I think we have to do uh, much of work and research uh, do validate this somehow and to say yes it's true the more teachers know about these theories and also how these subjective beliefs and implicit theories of students work and influence their behavior and the understanding of life um, they can foster students and they can foster themselves as well as it's professionalization to be honest um, this is what we think um, we have um, developed some materials where we think we don't we don't know it yet. Uh, we could foster maybe a teachers uh, and to support them to provide uh, growth mindset supporting um, instruction with, for example, uh, this one side uh, time sheets. You, here you have some, for example, neuroplasticity information. Um, there is some information about um, science. There are some fun facts and uh, some questions to reflect on neuroplasticity and how you act and how you interact with your students. And also, what can you actually do in the classroom to put a point on this fact? Second example, encouraging positive perseverance. Um, did you know that about perseverance and grit, uh, how it works and how it makes students working harder if they are not uh, motivated to do it for themselves and for their life and what you can actually do in your classroom. Um, another Another um, example, for example, encouraging positive self-talk, because also positive self-talk is also important uh, 
um, what can you actually do in the classroom, recognize students' negative self-talk, for example, and change it into a positive self-talk. Um, students tend to, to talk to themselves after a failure, after they have a negative grade, for example, I'm not good at this, I do not understand this, I can not do this, I give up, and so on. And you can change those, um, those thoughts if you communicate on these thoughts and about these thoughts. So what have we done further in our um, last uh, Erasmus Plus project? Uh, we have some partners coming from Slovenia because it's a Slovenian um, project and I joined uh, from Austria. So the two um, institutes from institutions from Slovenia is uh, University of Primorska and Step Institute. It's one university in, from Turkey, the Balikesir University. It's uh, one university from Romania, from Diogo Mures, and it's our university. And we have to product, uh, produce intellectual outputs, four intellectual outputs, a collection of GM tools, so growth mindset tools, a course cur curriculum, uh, teaching practices in a compendium, I will show you shortly, and a webinar for students. This is what we are developing at the moment. And uh, it's a, a, all of those things are for free in the website, on the website uniclothminds.a. So the website looks like this. You can see here um, project, outputs, resources, activities, and contact. <clears throat> And you can have a look on this a little bit later, if you like. Um, the collection of GM tools is, there are articles, there are those infographics I showed you, um, teaching materials and tools. And um, for example, my colleague of mine wrote, I'm not a math person, changing your attitude towards my math through the free online student course, how to learn math. Also, this you have seen already, um, the many infographics about uh, how, how to manage or how to deal with failure. And um, course curriculum is uh, something you can download with six modules, different languages. Um, Teaching practices, you can see this compendium. I know a little bit more about this because it was our output. It's a compendium with different best practice examples um, you can use for free. And also the webinar for students looks like this. Now you can use the slides uh, for your own work. So after this project, for me and for myself, I realized that growth mindset is, is a kind of didactical principle with uh, different theoretical backgrounds we already know from earlier research. And um, it's making uh, those different theories understandable. So this is what I learned from this project I have, I have uh, presented to you. But let's go now to studies on growth mindset and leadership for a very short time. Um, I have researched which studies exist about this topic and I found different things, for example, <coughs> these are uh, also for free and you will find all the articles in, uh, in the reference list. Um, a person with a growth mindset would believe that leadership abilities can be learned and acquired through effort coaching education and leadership training programs should consider focusing on helping coaches and leaders develop a growth mindset. This is more than 10 years old, it's 12 years old, this article. Um, another article writes, um, it's, it's from 2016, um, in line with prior studies, support is found for positive significant relationships for proactive personality and transformation and leadership with engagement. And additionally, transformational leadership is found to moderate the relationship between proactive personality and work engagement, but only 
uh, when employees have a growth mindset. So it's a very important moderating variable in this study uh, that uh, employees have a growth mindset. It's not from the school side, it's from employment. Um, <clears throat> Another investigation, growth minded managers consistently displayed more frequent use of leadership behaviors than did their fixed mindset counterparts. And this relationship was independent of demographic or organizational factors. So it has impact also in, in, uh, in this context. Another investigation from China, which is also different, I think very interesting for you as well. That's why I want to um, provide it to you and share with you. Based on a questionnaire of uh, teachers in China, more than 1,000, the results of this study showed that compared with teachers' growth mindset, transformational leadership had a stronger effect on teacher self-efficacy. So transformational leadership is more important in China than growth mindset and we have also seen this um, result in earlier in the PISA study where growth mindset has not this impact on the reading score of the Chinese students and I was searching for um, answers of this strange question and one hypothesis was that um, it's an artifact a methodological artifact which is not, I think. Uh, another possibly uh, answering point is that Chinese uh, people have a cultural difference in understanding how intelligence works. They're not focusing on the crystallized intelligence as we do in Europe. They're focusing on a fluid intelligence. That intelligence is something fluid, which is uh, changeable in, in a different way as we think intelligence works. And this might be the cause for this um, strange difference between Chinese students and Chinese teachers and the rest of the world. But it's only one possible answer. We can talk on this later maybe, because I think um, I'm not sure how interesting is it for you. Um, I want to, at the end of my presentation, give some insights about a scoping review of literature with recommended interventions about growth mindset in human resource development. And I like uh, reviews a lot and also meta-analysis because single studies have a lot of influences and contextual uh, factors. So as I think we should focus more on meta analysis and reviews. So the authors of this paper um, divided the outcomes into three levels, individual level, dyadic level, and organizational level. This is not coming from the educational part. It's a general part of leadership and investigated a lot of different studies. It's only to show you that uh, they had quite much work to do to find these uh, results. And they found that on an individual level outcome um, with growth mindset is associated higher work engagement, improved task performance, and creative activities are fostered. And also workplace satisfaction is connected to growth mindset. On a uh, dyadic level outcomes, they found more. They found improved relationships based on feedback and coaching, a positive influence of managers on their teams, a priming growth mindset, however, effectively reduces coach, coaches' bias, leading to an increased performance of athletes. So also in the sport is a difference. Fixed mindset features, managers sorry, were less likely to recognize the extent to which the employee's performance had improved. So they don't realize that much that the employees had improved their performance after an intervention. If the ha managers have a fixed mindset, um, growth mindset of a leader often shows an increase in humility in their behavior, which can impact relational and task performance of team members. And this was uh, um, one result I already showed you 
that transformational leadership has shown more effective, but uh, uh, even more effective when uh, employees have a growth mindset. Um, last but not least, organizational level outcomes were found as well. Uh, they are related to cultural and system variables, such as creating a culture of organizational learning and increasing collective efforts for the organization's improved overall performance. So leaders' growth mindsets have been demonstrated to impact the overall organization through their influence on employees. Managers with higher growth mindset levels demonstrated effective coaching behaviors and had a mediating effect on citizenship and so on. A growth mindset uh, help leaders and staff foster positive relationships, effective communication and collaborative efforts. And uh, the last sentence I think is very important for all of us. A school growth mindset is comprised of common mission, sharing knowledge, support and resources. So there are a lot of positive effects of a growth mindset. I think we have learned what is a growth mindset in contrast to a fixed mindset. It has additionally to a transforma transformational leadership, um, a positive influence on workers, on students, and maybe sometimes also on teachers. These are the references a lot. But I think you can click on them and do it. I can also enhance the, the <laughs> if it's too small. So thanks a lot for, I hope you enjoyed it and you liked it. And uh, there are some points you want to know or you want to discuss with me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Barbara. Um, do we have any comments or any questions? What is it? I... Θα σα στείλει τώρα ένα από τα μέλη του Συμβουλίου των Σύνδεσμων στο chat για να συμπληρώσετε. Τον πήρατε τώρα για να πάρετε το πιστοποιητικό όσοι σα το στην πλατφόρμα. Άρα, συμπληρώστε εκείνο το σύνδεσμο που βλέπετε και θα σα καλύπτω επιστοποιητικό στα emails που θα βάλετε. Ε, παρακαλώ τώρα για ερωτήματα ή σχόλια. Μπορείτε να ρωτήσετε και στα αγγλικά και στα ελληνικά όπω θέλετε. Και ταυτόχρονα μπορείτε και να γράψετε στο chat, ε, εάν δεν θέλετε να μιλήσετε. Ναι, Αντώνη. Θα είναι και εδώ από τα μέλη που, του ΚΟΕΚ που βρίσκονται στο ακροατήριο. Εδώ. Είπαμε, είναι η υπηρετική παρουσίαση. Uh, we are going to ask in German. I thought we only ask in English. So uh, you mentioned that the two kind of perspectives on mindset, the growth and the fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how difficult or how easy it is to change you know, the fixed mindset uh, into the um, you know, growth mindset, especially in perspective into innovation, contextual, contextual perspectives. <laughs> Sorry, Ivana, sorry, Andorra. And you didn't have to go to school, you didn't have to go to school, you online. If you want to open it, you can 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 open it. Thank you. I just want to ask you how difficult it is, how difficult it is, to change, let's say, from a fixed mindset into a growth mindset by taking into consideration various contextual perspectives. For instance, in our case, in Cyprus, the centralized education system, or to some extent, the conservative society. So 
is it difficult or is it uh, easy to change these kind of minds? Thank you. For this interesting question, uh, I think it's 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 not easy. Um, I think there are many students who have already a growth mindset. Who are those who learn, and for for them it's normal that they have to learn. And uh, the second point I want to mention is that. Um, it's the question how fixed the fixed mindset is. <laughs> and, and this is depending from the family, from the first socialization of the, of the student, and how uh, teachers tend to fix more and more this mindset. So it's a, a learning story, how fixed the mindset really is. And the later a student learns that he or she can develop herself or himself, the less easier it is, I would say. And we have seen it uh, in one of the of the intervention. Uh, I think it's it's going. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I would say here you can see. That it's not, it's not easy because you don't see very often effects if the students um, are going well and if if a growth mindset is not a topic in your intervention or in your work. Um, the more the students are in poor or in risk, I have already mentioned this, um, the more they can profit from this. But what I also want to say, we try it do to develop um, materials where we can concretely help uh, teachers to foster a growth mindset with these things. This is not um, uh, evaluated yet. I, uh, my, my colleagues are very optimistic that it will work, but I'm not sure. And I think uh, what we also have learned, uh, have learned in last week in another session of, with my colleagues together in a symposium, one of my colleagues told me that it's even if teachers have a growth mindset of themselves, for example, or of the teacher of the students, it's not automatically uh, transferring to the students. So you have to proactively try to change their thinking about themselves. And uh, what I also think to, to, to close your question, um, bum, bum, bum. I think it's very important to know about the attribution of style and the locus of control, that it's controllable if you want to reach something, that you have the goals who are really important, not only to the goal to look smart, for example, or to have a new fashion or something like that. And this is something in our society which makes it difficult because uh, it's a very important goal to look smart. But it's not, it's not so important to know a lot since we have Google. And this is a big problem. So it's not the teacher problem, it's a society problem, I would say. And this is the problem why it's also hard to, to change, difficult to change, because uh, it's common knowledge that it's easy to look smart, and but it's not easy yeah. to be smart. Thank you very much. Hmm? May I take the prerogative of the chair and ask, since we are on this slide, uh, thank you very much, uh, first of all, very interesting. And on this slide, I had a question while you were showing this during your presentation, Barbara. I thought, what is, as far as you can tell, what is the relationship between this new term, to me at least it was new, mindset or growth mindset, and metacognition, which is more known to me, mm -hmm. and especially locus of control, so to speak, internal locus of control and external locus of control. Is that a fixed and whatever else? I mean, so, do you have your own reasoning behind this, or 
is it, now I'm being a bit provocative, or is it like usually what we researchers try to do, like rename an existing theory, so to speak, <laughs> and dress it kind of differently? You put it on the table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was struggling a lot with okay. this growth mindset concept because uh, I was talking with my colleagues and we said, it's nothing new. Mm. We know about the beliefs, the mindset, we know about the attributional style and locus of control. We know about the achievement call orientation and motivational uh, theories a lot, much more than growth mindset would uh, explain to us at the moment. Um, Evidence-based explain. Um, but what I felt in my own teaching at the university was that it's a fantastic um, didactical principle. Students easier understand the concept of growth mindset than they do understand um, metacognition. Attribution mm -hmm. theory or exactly. loss of control. Okay. And it's also understandable for students who never knew this before and um, it's not only a didactical principle, I would say it's additionally something which um, collects all um, optimal aspects of those theories to come further and to develop yourself. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, summari it's a sum summary. And um, um, if you if you tell the students or teachers only about attributional style, it's not such informat not so informative than if you do tell them about the growth mindset. Achievement goal orientation is the same. What I do in my in my classes is I, I tell them both. As I said, this is our hypothesis. We need both to understand really what a growth mindset means. It's an easy word, but I think you have to provide all those theoretical background additionally to understand how this uh, principle can work with young students, for example. Yeah, yeah. this is... Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have a question. Oh, that's a long one. Yes, and I cannot read it, unfortunately. Uh, well, it's all in Greek. <gasps> During the summer, I read a book about growth mindset. It's Dirk, the one you uh, referenced. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to implement it in my class today during uh, live teaching, mm -hmm. live education. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just my own initiative. It's not in our curriculum. So as a teacher, I'm not really covered to do that, uh, legally speaking. That's what uh, this person, mm -hmm. this lady is saying. Uh, are there, does this exist in the curriculum of other European countries where you can teach and actually uh, cultivate, I use this term, mm -hmm. growth mindset? Is it easy to be taught uh, through the usual curriculum, or do you need to, uh, you know, devote some special times or special lessons in order to help your students to develop this kind of growth mindset? Um, Is it clear? I, I think well, I, I was just freely translating. Yeah, yeah. From, okay. I, th I think yes. I would um, say it's something which is not yet developed. Uh, in other European curricula, you mean? Yeah, I would we, think so. Our project, uh, which is ending end of October, uh, is one of the first which uh, tried to develop um, a curriculum for students to, to foster growth mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure if in, in, in the US, in the United States are more, I think yes, because Carol Dweck is working in America. Yeah. And uh, 
but uh, it's it's too early to say to say yes. Let's say based on this uh, question of Mrs. Angeli, um, do you think the schools or the institutions that are participating in your Erasmus project are they going to implement it even on a pilot basis and yes. in in real schools in Slovenia, let's say, and in Turkey? Yes, they are doing it. Yes, they're already doing it. In 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 Slovenia, uh, for sure, yes. Okay. Yes, they they have uh, a lot of experience working with growth mindset. Uh, in contrast to us. Yeah. In Austria. In Austria, we, yeah, we yeah. it's not in it, there's not so much experience. Um, as in Slovenia. In Slovenia, they have done a lot of work. They also provide uh, uh, information for the students during their classes, as far as I know. But okay. I think it's not fixed in the curriculum, not yet. And, and I understand the web page, you showed the web page of, your, of, yeah. the, of the project. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody of you is interested to see the curriculum that was developed through mm -hmm. this Erasmus project, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just get on this web page and see. Exactly. And in any case, I understand you will leave me. Uh, yeah, uh, where is this? Can you send us the web page? Uh, yeah, which one? This is the web page which is shown now, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Barbara, are you going to leave the presentation with me so that we are we free to upload it on our web page? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are on online, uh, we will upload the presentation of Professor Barbara Hapsingel later on in, in, in a few days. So, you will have it and you will have also the web page, but this is the one that is shown on this project. And therefore, you can find uh, we'll also on YouTube. Ah, that's it at all. <laughs> yes, I forgot to tell you. Yes, since we are already um, uh, taping, uh, the, the lecture will be uploaded on the YouTube channel of the Open University of Cyprus. And Erato Sari is already giving you the web page. So there you have it all. <laughs> so we have a, a hand there uh, for Tinika Radimu. Uh, please. Yes, good evening. Ask Congratulations question. for the presentation. It was very interesting. Um, I wonder, since you presented the result, Karadimu, Karadimu can yes. You hear us? Yes. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Who is he? Ah. Can you hear me? Ah, and I'm not to ask you to do it also. I'm sorry. Sorry, then I come in over here. I should say more or less. Oh, oh. Now I'm good. Bebe, bebe, para galo. Okay. So, good evening. Congratulations for the presentation. It was very interesting. Um, since the result of the grown mindset of children was 0.2, as I understand, means it's important. I wonder if the universities should um, take into consideration to have a lesson for teachers in the program study of the universities. So the teachers, while in the first education of undergraduate uh, uh, studies, to have a mindset, um, growth mindset session, so they can learn more, they have some material, they uh, practice through their practice to the school, and then go back to children and be ready for implement this. Because we have many theories. I think this theory of my growth mindset is a collective one, since it includes many theories here and there, as you present all together. It gives us more clues, more things to implement. And I wonder if the university could implement a growth mindset studies in the undergraduate st uh, studies for the teachers or even extra as, as uh, improvement, um, professional improvement, um, um, extra um, time for this after we, ha we are back in schools. Thank you. Thank you so much for this interesting question. 
if I understood it correctly, it was about if we should uh, implement growth mindset teaching in in the curricula or in in the in the universities. Was it, this it, it, to infuse it in the infuse university it. curricula? I would say like teacher training. I would say <laughs> I would say yes. I would uh, see this was to be the optimum of uh, of a good development. Um, I. Uh, <coughs> I also do not have the possibility to have a growth mindset lesson, for example. And what I do is um, that I transport it uh, all when I try it. I'm not sure if I do it, but I, I try it uh, with my, when I work with my students, I try to transfer it as a habit. And uh, don't, uh, I don't, uh, also talk about it, but I um, try to yes, habit, habitus to, uh, to make it a habit. Yeah, to make it a habit. Uh, yeah, and give uh, feedback, for example, which we have seen in the other uh, so in, in the other slides um, of these info sheets I showed you. I think the interesting uh, possibilities to do it. For example, a person versus process feedback. If you try out these things, which are very concretely, you can see um, that you can do a lot of with your speech, for example, with your language, how you give feedback and how you think about failure or how you think about, about a success. <clears throat> and it's the same thing as you can transport also a good and well-working attributional style, for example, or a good locus of control. Um, if you don't have the possibility to make it as a lesson or class, an extra class for teachers in the universities, you can make it as a habit. And I try this in my classes. Okay. Is, uh, I think, is there a follow-up question? From yes, Mrs. Just, uh, yes, just, um, just a comment, I would say. I agree with you because last year I saw it really working. The growth mindset uh, for not all the students, not all the pupils, but for two, three pupils that they didn't believe in themselves and we try this growth mindset, your effort, you can do it. At the end of the school year, really was a um, C, grade C and get a uh, grade A in maths and in Greek, really works. And it's uh, really nice to implement it in school, but we need uh, the teachers that we are now in schools, uh, some support from the system, from maybe extra training. We need uh, support to implement this. And again, congratulations, because it really works. Thank you. Thank you very much for this nice feedback. And I completely agree with you. I, I also had the same experience with my students, teacher students. They did their master. And they um, complained uh, that their own students are not motivated and they are frustrated in the school and don't want to make their homework and so on. And then I made one uh, session with, uh, with the growth mindset idea and explained uh, background theories and so on. And they, they gave me feedback and said, yes, it's really working in the classrooms that uh, students are changing their mind if it's not too fixed, as I said earlier, if, if they only think that they cannot change the situation. Sometimes it's not a mindset which is complexly uh, internalized. Sometimes it's only the idea that they cannot change uh, a bad situation, which is enough uh, to be unmotivated. And um, today I was talking with a, a very nice lady in Cyprus in the tourist office, of, uh, tourist office, tourist information office, and she was asking me what I'm doing here <laughs> in Cyprus. <laughs> and I said, yes, I'm giving a talk about growth mindset and blah, blah. And she said, yes, 
what we have to do is we have to encourage our students much, much. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's really true. And growth mindset is encouraging uh, students as well. Yeah. Ah, in the chat. Uh, ah, that's in English. You can read that, right? Uh, good evening. Welcome and thanks for the presentation. What kind of initiatives would you suggest for leaders' professional development regarding growth mindset cultivation? That's a dif difficult question because I have <laughs> never worked with leaders. But um, I would say similar to your previous answer, <laughs> I would say, it's, it's, it. it's maybe similar, like uh, I said before, yes, um, because, um, <clears throat> let me think, um, I think very important for leaders, because leaders are, thank you, um, they have to act, they have to be active, they are in doing things very fast, they have to decide things very fast, and seldom they have time to, to reflect on their own beliefs and mindsets. Maybe <clears throat> if you work with leaders, it helps already to, ref to have them to reflect on their own mindsets, what they think, is it, cha is it changeable, is it fixed? Do they think that the uh, teachers or um, employees are smart or intelligent or is it change changeable or not? So I think a reflection level is something very important for people who are in a leader level. And uh, yeah, but yeah, the rest is as I said before. I think, as you said before, maybe yeah. infuse it somehow in the curriculum. Well, or when, you know, to some extent, uh, the reason I mentioned lots of control before is because I learned it through one of the introductory courses in educational leadership that one of our professors mentioned internal and external levels of control. And he just mentioned, and I do remember that very vividly, that unless you have an external locus of control, you have no way to grow or to become better as a leader. Yeah. And I do remember that back 30 years ago when I was, well, not 30, 25 years ago when I was a, <laughs> a, a doctoral student. So, okay. yeah, locus of control is extremely important. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Maybe from the audience here or from our audience uh, virtually. Uh, you have a very warm thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Here or out there? Have a nice evening as well. Look. Thank you very much for the presentation. Have a nice Thank evening. You. We will have a nice evening, I think. Uh, we're going for dinner later on. <laughs> I hope you will have a nice evening. But for the time being, we do have a few more minutes. Do you have any comments or any other questions? OK. Uh, yes, please tell me. What? Thank you for your presentation as well. I was wondering, um, uh, because you mentioned something about evaluation. Uh, the initiative that you will uh, put into place, or will it be an, an, a separate, another project? Fortunately. <laughs> Go. It's like in the mountains, you also have this echo. <laughs> <laughs> like we were in the Alps, so yeah. like they, in the fairy tale exactly. area. <laughs> yeah, that was fantastic. Unfortunately not, because in the Erasmus Plus project, uh, there's the focus on, uh, on developing materials without uh, validating them, which I find it not so good, but it's the project and uh, 
unfortunately, uh, it's not focused on intervention. Um, there is a follow-up project. I won't join because uh, my time is up more, more or less, uh, where they will focus on materials with, uh, for teachers in, for secondary schools. This one was focused on university teachers. Um, but I agree completely with you. Uh, you should evaluate this and then go on. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And then there was another comment or question from Effie. What can a person do to increase their growth mindset? Grow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Uh, uh, grow and um, believe that uh, you are the master of your life. So believe, you mean, that you're the master of your life, of yourself. Yes. Yeah. Your, yeah. 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 How is that for an answer, Effie? Any other comments? Okay. Well, I guess uh, at this point, I really would like to thank you very much on behalf of all of us. Uh, um, it's been a very interesting presentation indeed. And, and I think from the comments and the questions, both here and virtual, thank I you. think you, you get this message. So thank you very much, Barbara, for being thank with you. us and for a very interesting presentation and hope to see you or to have you again. Yeah, so, <laughs> thank you very much. Ευχαριστούμε και εσάς που ήσασταν μαζί μας απόψε και εδώ με φυσική παρουσία στους χώρους του Ανοιχτού Πανεπιστημίου Κύπρου και εσάς που ήσασταν μαζί μας εξ αποστάσεως. Ελπίζουμε να ξανά είσαστε μαζί μας σε μια από τις επόμενες εκδηλώσεις. Καλό βράδυ σε όλους και όλες. Γεια χαρά. <laughs>